Hey gang and welcome back. This is a video that I've had a request for from a commenter on YouTube and it was regarding making characters look more human in renders and they wanted to know what iRace settings to get. Now it's not a bad question. Uh, Daz Studio documentation again is not really ideal on this so I'm gonna go through these things but it's going to be a two-part video this one the first part we're going to look at ira settings and then in the next video we're going to look at other things that we can do to improve the likeness so the first thing we want to look at is the ira tab obviously and we're going to go into the advanced tab at the top here and we're going to check our texture compression now texture compression is a way that we can save memory when we're doing our renders, particularly when there's a lot going on in a scene. Um, we can either compress them by a medium compression or a high compression amount. And um, texture compression itself doesn't necessarily have a huge impact on textures, by which I mean that if you were to look at two objects side by side, one who's textures had been compressed and ones hadn't you probably wouldn't be able to spot a huge amount of difference between the two but since we're looking for every little thing that we can to improve how realistic our characters are looking we want to make sure that these numbers are nice and high so i'm actually going to change these numbers so that both medium and high are in fact i'm going to change them to 8200 and 8200 that means that unless the character that we're looking at has textures larger than 8k then they won't be compressed so we'll see the textures in their most raw format so we're going to come down into our editor and we're going to go through these tabs and we're going to talk about the things that will make a difference and the things that won't because there's a lot of stuff going on inside the render settings tab that people will play with that have absolutely no impact in fact a lot of the times they don't even change your render times let alone the photo realism of the render so firstly we're going to go into the general tab and we can see here that we can set our dimensions and we can choose whether we're doing a still image or a uh, series of images or a movie and we can set it to a render target in a new window or just a file and then this is the one that's important where it says auto headlamp make sure that says never there's never a good reason to have the headlamps on your cameras on never it just makes your images look horrible just don't just turn them off and <laughs> make sure that that says never so that's all we really need to worry about in the general tab make sure your auto headlamp is off and leave it off forever Render modes in photo real, don't really need to worry about that. Progressive rendering is the next place that we're going to look. Now this is where a lot of people will play around to try and speed up their render times. Now I have to say at this point, and this is full disclosure, if you're trying to save time on your renders, you're probably gonna to have to make cuts which make your images look less realistic. Photo realism and render times are kind of inversely proportional. If you if you're trying to save time then you're not going to get your photo realism so think about that before you start making any changes you can get close but ultimately you just have to sacrifice one or the other so we're in the progressive rendering tab we're going to set rendering quality enable and we're going to turn our rendering convergence ratio up to 100 percent we're going to change our rendering quality up i always usually have mine at 100 and then what we also need to do is change our max samples and max time because quite often when you're particularly rendering large scenes the scene takes a lot longer to render than these parameters allow and you end up losing all of your time because it'll stop rendering long before the render is ready so we're going to just whack these both up to the absolute maximum and that means that we're giving Das Studio as much of a fighting chance as possible at creating something that's photorealistic. So we're just going to pretty much ignore the alpha tab. We're going to go into optimization. Now, this is another one where 
if you mess around with these settings the chances are you're probably going to mess up something for example the path length the max path length that dictates how many times light will bounce before it stops traveling which can mean the eyes won't render properly if you play with them minus one is a default that means an infinite number of times just leave it don't change it don't touch anything in this tab there's no need coming into the next tab which is filtering now firefly filter is not too bad it's not going to mess up your renders too much all it's going to do is get rid of those little bright specks that appear during the rendering process the next thing that we want to be paying really close attention to is the post denoiser available now a lot of people since this was introduced in DAS 4.11 people have been using it to get faster renders just don't leave it turned off it knackers your skin textures it makes characters look horrible and cartoony if you're trying to render a massive scene where there's no real fine detail required it's great but if you're trying to render a realistic portrait of a character leave it off don't touch it spectral rendering again just leave that default there's nothing in there that's going to really have any impact on how your characters look and now we come on to the last two tabs your tone mapping and your environment and this is where we need to look at what the rendering settings actually are for the most part the rendering settings are basically the same sort of thing as the camera settings you're not actually changing the content of the scene particularly you're just choosing the exposure the composition Playing around with these settings isn't going to make a great deal of difference to, in fact, this particular tab, the tone mapping tab, won't make the slightest difference to the photorealism of your render. All this will do is dictate the brightness, the contrast of your image. So just leave these on default, only change them if you need to, unless you're going for a very specific look or style in your image there's no need to touch the bottom part of this tab at all because they can knacker the way your image looks this is part of where we come into what i'm going to be talking about in the second video and that is making sure that you're buying your characters from a reputable and good quality artist there's a lot of characters out there that have got really really bog standard textures there's been no work put into them whatsoever the surfaces are all knackered um, and they just you no matter how much work you put into it the odds are you're probably never going to get them looking photo real because the artist hasn't put the work in but most artists should have created their characters to work at gamma 2.2 you'll probably find various threads on the DAS Studio forums and videos on YouTube about people who claim that they know a better gamma setting just ignore it gamma 2.2 is the default that's what all the characters should have been made for leave it as it is lastly we're going to come into the environment tab and this one's interesting because this is where we choose the lighting of our character but not only that but we also choose the background if we're using HDRI so at the moment we've got environment mode set to dome and scene that's pretty much going to be your default in most situations if you're using and if you're rendering an indoor scene then you can have the hdri like shining in through the windows but you're going to need the lights in the scene in order to create the full effect but this is where a lot of people will fall down for example if I put this character in a room with brightly colored walls the light will stream in through the windows and from the light sources and it will hit those walls and the light will then change color if you shine a white light at a yellow wall the yellow light bounces off of it that's how color works <laughs> not teaching you to suck eggs or anything and then that light will bounce back and hit the character creating a yellow cast on them and this is one of the things that people don't really think about is that you need to be careful of how close your characters are to the surfaces that have color cast on them and how bright your light sources are that are bouncing off of them because any color that you put in the scene particularly on large flat surfaces like walls floors and ceilings that light is inevitably going to bounce back at the character and create color casting which automatically makes your images look less realistic because it's not calculated perfectly 
if you were to see someone standing in a room in real life you would still see a bit of a color cast but your brain would interpret the image differently so you wouldn't think anything was out of place but in this case your eye doesn't do the same kind of mental gymnastics when you're looking at the image so you see the color cast in a different way so be mindful of where your light sources are what color cast you've put on the image use nice pastel colors in walls and things like that if you can and then it will help keep the image looking realistic now draw dome i generally have that turned on you don't have to if you're running an indoor scene and you don't have any cameras pointing out the window to see what's out there you can just have it turned off but in the case of this it's just a character stood in nowhere then it helps to add to the realism of the image if you've got the dome turned on dome intensity and environment map these are basically the brightness of your HDRI and they're multiplied together so if you're finding that your scene is a bit dark you can change one of these values up if you feel like you're not getting the amount of light out of the map that you should you can increase the intensity as well but ultimately they do the same thing they just multiply together so if you have 1 and 10 it's going to be 10 if you have 2 and 5 it's going to be 10 it's really simple so most of these other things are just a case of orienting your dome rotating it around the x y and z axis rotating it around the y axis again um, that's really all there is to it draw ground it'll, it'll cast shadows if you ask it to um, in the purpose of this render we're not actually looking at the feet so there's no need to draw the ground so now when we hop into our render preview in the nvidia ira settings it'll take but a moment it'll have a bit of a think she looks pretty realistic not tooting my own horn or anything but this you know this character looks pretty realistic and this is just from the render settings tab in the next video we're going to look at the ways that we can actually change the character itself in order to make our images look more photorealistic but this is a pretty good place to start thanks very much for watching this i hope you found it useful give me a thumbs up a subscribe a like hit the notification icon tell your aunties uncles cousins boyfriends girlfriends pets anyone you can think of that might be interested in watching and i'll see you in the next one Thanks very much. Bye-bye.